It is a nice morning here in Yuma, Arizona. I'm on my way to Sedona to check it out and to report from there to invite you to the workshop. I will speak a bit about, about the first contact and things happening after the first contact. Of course it is all speculation, but it is an educated guess. Of course we want the first contact to happen as soon as possible. But what if not all aliens are positive? That what bothered me um, a little bit when I read and listen, uh, read the books and listened to the stories by Stephen Greer. In Stephen Greer's um, scheme of things, model of universe, all aliens are positive. <coughs> and if anything else, if anything negative happens, that would be uh, something done by humans, by, uh, by military industrial complex. And that's about right, that's about right. We hear that the solar system has been quarantined and that only positive aliens are here and everything is under control. And only once in a while negative aliens sneak and make a bit of trouble here. So we started thinking about uh, the first contact being sort of slow and uh, unimpressive. Suppose the aliens just start coming to different places and people maybe get excited for a little while and then forget about them because the troubles will distract the humans from the aliens. Can you imagine that scenario? Yeah, I, I got that idea yesterday. I was um, very excited to see the dolphins. There was a, a long pause between between the last time I saw them and recently. There was I was missing them. I was coming to the beach, but there was no dolphins. I was going to the ocean on a the kayak. There was still no dolphins. And yesterday they came. So that was very exciting. And uh, I was so excited. I did, decided to share it with uh, <clears throat> people who look nice. Um, children, families with children, even adults who looked happy and spiritual and kind. So I said to them, here, look, dolphins, dolphins, over there. And dolphins were over there for a long time, maybe an hour. They were swimming. I think there was a lot of fish around. So they, and there was um, a nice gentleman, looked like all, an old gentleman on, uh, it's called standing, I don't know how they're called. You just stand on the surfboard and kind of pedal, pedaling board. So this gentleman, he was uh, just uh, kind of standing and, and dolphins were dancing around him. It was very beautiful and it happened for a long time. So I, I, saw, I, I said to people, look, dolphins, dolphins. And uh, they looked and they didn't see dolphins because dolphins just show up just once in a while. But they show up like very impressively. They, they really jump out and slowly dive in and they do it like there was like 10 of them. So you can't miss them if you look. But people weren't looking anymore. They just kind of got distracted. They looked, no, nah, no dolphins and continued to play with their sand, you know, talk to themselves and taking, taking selfies. I'm taking a selfie now, right? So <coughs> not that I'm very different. But um, I just realized people ignore dolphins, even dolphins are right in front of them. Like if, ju if you just look carefully enough for like three minutes, you would see them, but they didn't care to look. So <clears throat> I was thinking dolphins are aliens and uh, suppose the aliens are here and some people get really excited and some people say, huh, oh, whatever. Yeah. They're so focused on uh, on their world and their selfies and uh, aliens are just not part of their world. So it is possible that after a first excitement, people kind of um, would ignore the aliens. 
And suppose in that case, um, it would be up to the governments to invite the aliens and to and to use them to set up the regulations and to use them. And suppose um, some countries, like all of the countries, are kind of competing right now, and some countries are competing really aggressively to each other. Suppose one country invites um, good aliens. Um, just by logic, the other country should invite the aliens, which would uh, give it advantage over the other one. And uh, and that looks like a, sounds like a formula for a disaster. Um, <clears throat> so I guess this is why um, the aliens repeat and require and insist that humanity unites, and they want to deal to negotiate, to deal, to cooperate with the united humanity. And we are pretty far from that, I guess. Um, I don't know if you notice the whole logic here, but <clears throat> just I will just kind of reiterate in a simple way. So if the humanity is as divided as it is now, and the aliens follow the rule that each country is independent and uh, uh, they, uh, they allow each country to invite a different type of aliens that, that we might end up with a lot of different competing aliens in different countries. Right now we know that different countries are under control, I would say, under control of different aliens. I'm not sure which ones are which, but uh, I think uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago it was uh, reptilians in Russia and greys and Orions in the uh, US. And that was pretty clear because, you know, both countries had the abductees experiences, but the stories were radically different between Russian um, contactees and American contactees. And now they remain to be pretty much different. So it looks like different races, different countries are basically under different aliens. They, the aliens look like, look like they divided the spheres of influence, so under different influences. <clears throat> So if this continues, then we have a big trouble here. So now I kind of understand when uh, some people talk about sovereignty of Earth. And uh, yeah, if, if we have some sort of a fight between different aliens for, di for different territories, that would be pretty weird. I guess that's what happens in, uh, on the planet Era in Pleiades. They also have territories and some sort of wars, which is very funny because if you look at uh, capabilities of the aliens, they, they easily can wipe out the planet easily with their technologies. We can do it, but aliens can do it like many times easier. But still they would have like some sort of cold war or some sort of um, territorial um, competition and it doesn't have to be in terms of fighting like not not necessarily how they call it not necessarily, not necessarily military fight it could be just competition on other areas like economically as they did through the history of the earth the aliens would uh, <clears throat> come create a new race a new human race it would take a mixture of different human races and mix it with their own DNA, maybe with DNAs of some other aliens to create a superhuman and uh, and then make um, and then breed them, that's the word, breed and then they would breed them us 
and create a new race, a new people, teach them the new structure of the government, structure of the economy, politics, religion, language, even language, and then uh, make them some sort of independent. Sometimes they would make them independent, sometimes they would make them openly controlled. But then uh, they would uh, try to conquer the territory with this kind of tribe. And some tribes are local and some tribes like go way beyond their territory, like Mongols or uh, Romans, like any big empire. <clears throat> so we don't want that to repeat uh, in a new history now. We don't want the aliens to create a new race and uh, and conquer the earth but that is actually what is happening the hybridization program is already creating a new human and different hybridization programs create different hybrid uh, different new humans and when aliens come they would uh, either hybridize or uh, hybridize technically or marry into this into the humanity and uh, because it is already happening it's really hard to stop and I don't think it is it should be stopped it just should be uh, understood and uh, managed regulated yeah regulated that's the word so you know we are already hybrids you know we cannot say don't do hybridization because we are hybrids and there is so many hybrids you can't really stop that process Suppose new hybrids come with new, better qualities. Who wouldn't uh, marry them? And uh, we, you know, how can we prohibit humans from marrying in, into hybrids? It's already happening. You know, it, is, it has been happening through the Earth's history and it continues to happen. We are a hybrid species. We are a super hybrid, multiple hybrids. We are a, a big mixture of multiple hybrids still sort of separated into races but now it is sort of <clears throat> especially in the last uh, I would say 100 years we are mixing together but still there is great variety and great uh, um, diversity great diversity so suppose aliens come and continue to improve us and give us super qualities <clears throat> And some races would uh, would receive uh, more super qualities, say, of reptilians, and other super races would get super qualities, say, of <coughs> Pleiadians, Arcturians, and so on. So this this is going to be a, <coughs> a strange situation if we have competition. And looking now how the situation develops, I don't see how we can avoid having competition. <clears throat> the separation between countries didn't become smaller. It's, you know, the language barrier, the culture barrier, geographical barrier, political barriers, borders, and even levels between, uh, uh, le separators between the classes, separation between the classes of society is huge. <clears throat> It wasn't as visible before because it was hidden. There was a huge layer of hiding. <coughs> yeah, political correctness, hiding the separation between classes. It was uh, maybe visible to the outsiders, but... Uh, Yeah, but in the Western world, um, it was sort of hi hidden in the open of that uh, separation between, uh, you know, you, you name it, between uh, people of different colors, of different cultures, of different uh, education, different classes, different... Uh, 
different fina financial prosperity, genders, and even yeah, even cultures, even cul subcultures of the of the society. When <coughs> now we we drive through different states, and you can see clearly how this. Um, subcultures they kind of coexist but still are separate they can can even live in a in the same house in different apartments they're still separate like now we have uh, many Chinese educated Chinese immigrants in um, in California and uh, they still still pretty much separate they you know intermingle mingle together they speak their language and uh, they integrate into the society without actually dissolving it. But you know, they make sure their grandchildren will dissolve it, in it but but not the parents yet. And uh, the recent elections of uh, Trump, yeah, they kind of revealed how how separated we are and how how much is there people who are angry upset desperate poor uneducated and angry angry is the, the main thing um, another thing which it is globalization it is it's not only globalization in terms of becoming aware of different um, races. It's also globalization in terms of recognizing different subcultures, subclasses within your surroundings. <clears throat> Say you friend people on fa Facebook and you realize sometimes that they are completely incompatible or they radically um, diverge from you in terms of their political views, their values, their level of kindness versus anger. Until I speak about politics, people like me, maybe, they kind of tolerate me, but then when I <laughs> say that everyone is equal, everyone should be equal, everyone should have equal rights, and uh, everybody should be in peace, then we are all equal before aliens. Um, people disagree. They have their own strong opinions that, you know, we should fight. Um, and unless we will fight, we will uh, disappear. So I guess this is one of the main uh, separation points about Peace versus war, us versus them. And accepting the aliens, accepting the hybrids and who we are. Are we hybrids? Are we aliens? Are we humans? And maybe they are right because uh, when you look at average, average population, what do they choose? What do they do? What movies do they watch? What games do they, computer games do they play? How they treat each other? You're not so sure that we are ready. You're not so sure that you, you want to average with them. Because if we, are, if we kind of unite and average our opinions, the majority is for... Uh, for the things which you wouldn't accept. So you don't want to average with the majority. You don't want to really unite with the majority. You sort of want the earth to unite, but in, a, in our way, not in the majority way. I guess that's the major pro problem pronounced. We want the first contact. The first contact requires that the earth unites. Otherwise it will be disaster. And uh, the role of the, the rules of democracy require that 
uh, the majority decides uh, that we average mathematically average we, we um, unite in our opinions and if we if we unite in our opinions then then it will be even bigger disaster because uh, the, the the opinions of a majority are about anger separation fight and uh, and fear the majority is confused and it is absolutely clear to everybody <laughs> even to the majority So, uh, I guess my take is, uh, don't take the opinion of the majority, re-educate the majority. It is, uh, it has been around the idea of elitist elite, elite right, uh, of uh, educated elite, enlightened elite, illuminati, if you wish. The idea that the majority, uh, the majority has to be illuminated, educated. So basically, educational idea, renaissance. We want a renaissance, we want to re-educate and soften the morals of the masses and give them positive ideals, positive values. That's why we are here. That's what we are doing right now here. Positive values. Love everybody. Be kind to everybody. Your religion should be love and kindness. Another example, I don't know if you noticed it, maybe you noticed, but you didn't associate it with, um, with the majority. But another example of uh, integration, kind of sloppy integration, what, what do I call sloppy integration? Maybe you can find a better word. Averaging. Another example of averaging, mathematical averaging. You know, how do you average mathematically? You take, say, three numbers, nine, 12, and 15 and average them and you get 12 as an average so that's called averaging so when you average the majority and the elite you get the opinion of the majority you get the morals and habits of the majority so that's why aristocracy doesn't want to be uh, averaged with the majority because their purified ideals purified manners would dissolve and be um, annihilated that what happened in america it was uh, a country of uh, people who ran away from their europe european civilization and usually these were poor people desperate people or explorers who really couldn't couldn't handle their rigid structure of the society they wanted complete freedom they wanted yeah, freedom, liberty. So they came here and they dropped the, lots of limitations, lots of morals and limitations and rules of the society. What was inappropriate there was permitted here. And see what happens. <laughs> After a while, somehow this, this um, country became strongest military in a military way and also strongest in terms of brainwashing now the whole globe is being brainwashed in american way so in, uh, historically it was a very positive pro progressive progressive step but uh, some culture is obviously being lost or at least hidden lost or hidden so what I'm talking about in terms of averaging is the problem with interfaces, uh, computer interfaces uh, and um, smartphone interfaces. Until now, uh, you know what I'm talking about, do you? Until now, like Microsoft Word, the original versions like 10 years ago, they were made by smart people for smart people. And recently, in 2007, it happened in 2007, plus minus one year, um, they started stupidifying interfaces, making them for less smart people. And uh, 
you know what interface is, right? The buttons, the, you know, the buttons, the icons, the how interact with the computer. It becomes uh, less and less convenient for people who are intelligent and more and more convenient for people who are completely literate. They keep replacing the text with icons. They keep making the icons as simple as possible. And very often now you have the website with a single button, like pay now, and very little information. It's now no information, just just bold uh, one button or one message and a little bit of beaut beautiful graphics, sharp, commercial, crispy graphics. So instead of information, instead of knowledge, you now get call for action. It's called call for action. Action buttons. And it happens everywhere. You, instead of uh, more information now, you have very simple, clean interface where you can do much. There is no function, but but it is acceptable and suitable for um, simple people. And of course, I understand that you know some of this is perfect, right? So you you don't need much complexity. Complexity is also bad, but but it goes to extreme. You lose functionality just because of. Uh, because the software now is oriented, uh, interfaces of the software are now oriented for basically literate people. And this is, on the way, in a way, it's uh, it's averaging. It is a beautiful process of involving uh, illiterate people, masses, illiterate masses of the earth into into new age, into globalization and computerization of the world, internetization. So now I hear, I didn't witness, but it's kind of obvious. The smartphones are everywhere. In the places where there is no, was no computer, no internet, poor literacy, now everyone has a smartphone and they learn to read and they learn how to use internet through the smartphones. And that's that's beautiful in a way. That is exactly what we are calling for. It is uh, education, enlightenment of masses. And these masses are huge with like, there is a small layer of programmers, intelligent people. Um, what's that word? Not intelligent, intelligent is the wrong word. It's a, a Russian word. I meant, now, educated people, that would be the right word. A, a small layer of educated people who created this, um, maybe thousands, maybe a few millions, but now billions are, are joining this new age of internet, new age of globalization. So billions become connected and plugged into the network. And this billion, many of these billions are either illiterate or at least they are literate in their uh, local language, but now they they learn uh, they learn English, and they learn uh, the ways of internet. They learn uh, they're connected to millions, to billions. I know they join Facebook, they integrate, and they do it in a clumsy way, but they do. So I don't know how many generations it will take, but the humanity does unite. So, um, coming back to the idea of the contact. It would be nice, obviously, to prevent. So, the, what is the problem? The problem is a bad scenario could be that different countries would invite different competing aliens and would continue fighting using new ways. And the new ways could be military, economical, technological, and uh, hybridizational. So some countries can uh, strive to upgrade their genomics to get new qualities, like to be stronger, smarter, faster, better workers, more united into telepathic network, uh, more aggressive, more competitive. 
you know whatever makes makes them win in the in the in the in the global economy create more resources whatever like define china you know, whatever they want to do more united into one production so some countries want want to might want to do that and uh, they would do, they, they might do it one way and some other countries might do it another way and uh, instead of peace on earth they might get even stronger competition and uh, uh, ugly competition i don't know it might be good might be not i i really like everybody to cooperate and not to compete i mean there is a health okay there is a healthy competition and there is a, an ugly competition and what we are looking now at looks like more like a, a chance for ugly competition. Uh, for example, uh, I was warned the aliens uh, uh, sent me a message through a channel saying that beware of beware of excessive outbreeding. Outbreeding is just another word for. Um, hybridization with outside um, galactic races so some some races were destroyed themselves through excessive outbreeding excessive galactic outbreeding uh, basically um, in, in terms of biology it is it can be understood it should be like an energy biology energetic healing in terms of energetic healing it can be understood that we developed a pretty healthy biosphere. Of course, there is ecological problems, but still the humanity is pretty energized. Our babies are born healthy. Healthier than before and reasonably healthy. We can uh, proliferate pretty well. We can breed pretty well. And people are... The, the the percentage of healthy people is pretty reasonable. I say 80-90% of healthy people born and live in reasonably healthy lives initially. Then they get screwed, but but uh, the potential is pretty good. Compared to other races, it's it's reason, uh, really good. Other galactic races. So, like... Uh, the greys, the zetas, and some other races, they would genetically modify themselves so much, they would mess up not only the genomic part of the genome, the physical part of the genome, but they would mess up their etheric part, the astral part of the genome. Uh, you know, you have physical body, you have astral body, mental body, etheric body. I'm talking about these bodies. They also program, they also have their own um, analog of DNA. Say it could be in a shape of spirals or it could be even a shape of uh, uh, symbols and code or it could be in a shape of a wave but, but it's still there is a There is a pretty, pretty much extensive code, maybe much bigger code for the etheric and astral part of the body than for the physical body. So, and that is united into global uh, humanity. For humans, it would be glo global etheric genomic code for the for the humanity. It exists out there. You can call it energy, yeah, united energy or um, human collective whatever you want to call it but it's it's huge and it's important and it is very healthy in many ways very promising in many ways right now of course there are sicknesses of course there are problems but it is uh, it is the main treasure of the humanity what happens uh, in interaction between um, physical part of the genome the biosphere physical biosphere and energetic astral biosphere which is energetic astral biosphere, it's even bigger and huger and more complex. So excessive outbreeding with the galactic races, excessive hybridization with the galactic races is also a danger. And we should 
address it, be aware of it. I would say it's already happening, but it's not excessive yet. So it should be regulated, it should be studied, it should be understood. There are races who are really good um, genetic and galactic genetic engineers. We should consult with them and be aware of the problem and be aware that this is to be regulated. How much do we want to outbreed? It's kind of weird. We are not used to regulating the breeding, like freedom of love. We, you know, we are hippies. We should be able to have a free choice who to hybridize with. You know, if I want to uh, have sex with aliens, why should I be prohibited doing this? But um, <clears throat> I'm sure there are galactic ways of uh, limiting this. Like a typical way would be just. Li li uh, limiting the travel, limiting the, the uh, citizenship rights. I'm not sure that countries have citizenship. I, I think they do. The, the galactic races, the galactic cultures, I think they do have citizenship rights too. Not everyone can, uh, can um, come and marry and uh, live in their planet. So, so there should be some uh, global merit take into account so there should be some rules and regulations and even if it is not money there should be some way of uh, at least studying it and be aware of it as, as a global community like America has quotas you know uh, in one year you can uh, have so many immigrants you can have so many temporary workers and so many visitors without work permits. It's sort of inequality, it's huge inequality, it's huge exploitation system, but um, maybe the numbers are not right, but the principle I think is still valid. Because if America right now opens the, the, the borders, um, it might survive, but might not. The Europe did it and uh, and there were troubles. I think they are sort of, instead of solving these troubles on um, country level, now they solve it on, on city levels. And on uh, uh, instead of borders outside of the, each country, like Greece and Germany, now they have more um, separating limits uh, within the country on different, so instead of, uh, a border patrol they now would have uh, stronger doors stronger fences and uh, stronger system of um, protecting themselves from from criminals on the street or just from non-criminal but uh, but from people who are not fitting the system so the, it, it is separation, horizontal separation within the society. Like we have now homeless in uh, all U.S. cities, and uh, they just kind of handled. They are handled. They handled. It's it's a shame, but instead of one way of separating, we are separating now horizontally. So we have separations within the society and uh, you can see it right now yeah people living in poorer homes uh, and there is a invisible or sometimes visible way of separating these people from richer people living in better homes and they're even better and they're even better and the, the, the level uh, the, the number of layers is huge and the communication between is between them is complex you know you live in, 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 is it called stratified? In layered, you live in straight, in, uh, in layered society. And uh, let's, uh, let's appreciate it and understand how it functions and see how it can be improved. I think the, the, the density of populations here is so high that my voice might be waking up some people. So I should step out of this community. And anyway, and anyway, we define the problem that there might be competition between different countries and uh, um, 
associating themselves with competing aliens. I don't know how real the problem is. We have to study it. Maybe, uh, maybe it's not a problem. Maybe the aliens already united in a way that uh, it's not for us to solve. It is quite possible that they already took charge of it and uh, we are dealing with a united um, galactic alien body which would not allow such competition to happen on Earth. So, to solve the problem of fighting between humans using alien technologies uh, can be solved by the aliens, by, un by them having united, by them being united. But also it would be nice to solve it on a, on a level of humans, by humans being united, in a positive way. Yeah, obviously there is a... a we, are, we are already united in a negative way in many ways, like uh, the Western world dominates in a military technological sense, dominates the Earth, and, uh, and it is some sort of uniting. So the main point is that the aliens have to be united, the humans have to be united, and this union should be positive. Positive, progressive, productive. Practical. So what is wrong with the way humans are united right now? Yeah, right now the humans are united into one monetary system which is sick, by one military system which is sick, one political system which is sick, and uh, the brainwashing is also very unifying, but it is also sick. And we are here in underground, should we call ourselves, yeah, in alternative culture, it is grassroots. We are here in grassroots alternative culture. Uh, we are full of kindness and love. We are full of education, we know stuff, with, uh, we care about people, we care about things. But our voice is, uh, is not taken into account by the humans. Our voice is down here in the roots and there are few people who are watching, very few, compared to what other videos I watched, it is very few. So so we are not reaching we are not we are not reaching yet. And we don't matter yet, and our ideas don't matter yet. So that's a challenge. How do we make these ideas positive and how to make these ideas click and make them count. One way these ideas count is through the aliens. The aliens listen. We have more of the uh, ear of the aliens rather than and, and none of the ear of the governments, except those government meetings where, where we speak. Unfortunately, I'm not consciously aware of those. I'm only listening about them, but I don't remember any of those. It would be nice to be more involved as our physical bodies and physical minds to be involved in this process. So my approach is writing books, speaking on YouTube, and uh, building Facebook communities and other sort of online communities where we, our ideas are discussed and become populate the minds, where our ideas populate the minds, where we light up the minds. I think this is the most important thing. I think it is the most uh, biggest bang for the buck. Biggest bang for the buck. Buck, yeah. It is where um, the progress is and this kind of thinking will define the future. Right now there is a vacuum, nobody is discussing it, or very few people are discussing it, so at least on that level, in the humanity. I'm pretty sure there is a, a layer of, uh, of out-of-the-planet humans who discuss it in uh, great detail, and sometimes we have a little glimpse into their discussions.
But in the humanity, we are there is so few of us we discuss discuss in a say in a positive way the the plants. So my suggestion is that when the contact happens, light workers should be invited. <laughs> it's kind of obvious for us, but it's not obvious for, for the governments. They think that they are in charge. So at some point, I think uh, it would be very helpful for for the contact to happen on multiple levels on terms of the government elective represent elected representatives in terms of uh, scientists uh, people of culture how do you call it cultural celebrities like writers and uh, movie producers that's how we call it um, social organizations I think it would be great if uh, the aliens would form their their representations in the universities and hospitals and we need a culture of non-governmental public contact with the aliens it's already happened and Stephen Greer is pioneering it and um, there are groups of humans of light workers who come and uh, contact with aliens so we have a human colony is one of those through channelers and through groups of meditate local local uh, groups which meditate and invite the aliens and communicate with them and deliver to them our ideas and uh, in that terms yeah, Sedona, Sedona is our next step where we meet together and uh, discuss those things and communicate with the aliens and get channel communications back and back and forth. And we learn channeling and we learn to connect with the aliens energetically. So we create this new culture. So from my perspective, it is, it is uh, key for the future of the humanity. So I invite you to visit Sedona. We have a workshop at uh, in Sedona at uh, a rented house, and um, and the dates are February first. We meet on February first in a couple months, and um, we will sit in a circle, meditate. We'll teach channeling and galactic reiki. We'll do a lot of channeling. And there will be a lot of initiations, there will be a lot of spirit and uh, alien work. And to sign up, go to our site hucolo.org, H-U-C-O-L-O.org, and sign up for the workshop. And it's not to be profitable, it is just the money which it costs to rent the house in Sedona and to bring Jim there, our main channel to the aliens. It's actually sponsored. We sponsor it instead of getting money from that. We put our own energy and money to to make it happen. So invite uh, your support by donating towards that workshop and by coming to, to the workshop. There are two options. You can live in the house which you rent together or you can find your own, uh, your own place to stay and just join us for the for the day activities. And we'll go and uh, do work on the on the vortices. We'll uh, visit local uh, places of of energy power, of spiritual power, special locations, special active points, and we'll make circles and meditate and invite their uh, the the astral energies to and astral and angelic energies to connect to the to the surface and to activate the, the portals so we'll create some energy spirals and energy vortexes which would be connecting the higher dimensions to their 
uh, 3D dimensions. We'll ground these high dimensional energies to Sedona area. So this is the work which is uh, needed from us and we'll gladly do it and it is fun. And also we'll have the opportunity to hug Jim, which is very essential. It's a very healing process. After that, the next workshop will be at the same place as before, in Dunsville, New York, near Buffalo. And in the same camp, we'll meet again in August. It's already decided we will, uh, we are making a deposit, a money deposit and rent the camp. And uh, the, the living is there much cheaper. So, if you can't afford Sedona, plan for coming in Dunsville. And some people just drive there. Both are good. The injuries are very different. Sedona is, uh, <laughs> is a power station. And we are doing it first for, for the first time in Sedona, so we'll see how much of power can we handle. In, in New York, in Dunsville, New York, I was drunk with spirit, with the spirit. It was hard to uh, run the workshop and be functional when there is so much spiritual energy falling, flowing through you, when there is so many aliens wanting to speak to you. It's, it, it, it's going to be much stronger, but I just realized I learned a lot of things. I learned how to run it, so it's uh, I wouldn't I would be much more efficient because I already know that uh, I know the technology how to run it know the skill how to run it and also I know how to I know the people initially my ambition was to teach people everything I know and now I understand it's impossible so basically the main role for me in, in that uh, Sidon workshop would be to hold the space for you to call people, who, who, whoever want to come, to call, to hold the space, to organize just the time and space, to synchronize people, create a space, and that let uh, let you to uh, to shine there. I don't have to deliver all my knowledge there. I can deliver it right now. So I don't have to do it during the workshop. But of course, I will be teaching some. But the main thing, you will be there and um, you, while we are holding space, you will have direct spiritual downloads, which are much more uh, profound than whatever we can say. So for you, it would be essential to, to accept. So we start from meditating on acceptance of the downloads. And then we, the main effort is to purify, synchronize our mind and emotions, synchronize our intentions because everyone comes with a different intention. We all want love, but we want it in many different varieties. <laughs> so I'll talk about non-sexual love and sexual love and stuff. Um, so we'll do, work a lot on energy healing because it is the door, easiest door for, un, for uniting. So sometimes you can speak for hours and still be separate and then you can hug or touch during Reiki session or just kind of unite the energy during the energy session and then you'll be united at once. You don't have to speak a lot. You just uh, do a movement, energy movement and you'll be united. And once we, we are united, we invite uh, the higher dimensional energies to ground wherever we make a circle. And we'll make a lot of uh, vortex activation, vortex portal, portal, vortex activations. And this is necessary for the ascension. The, a part of the ascension is conscious and part of it is unconscious. It is 
whatever happens with the surface of the planet, with the biosphere, it, it needs to be united with uh, higher dimensional energy. So we start that process consciously. Our invitation matters. We om, chant, silently meditate, we invite the energies, and when we unite in our invitation, that happens. So, of course, we want people who are, what's the word, congruent, aligned, agree with the, with the, with the whole idea. It would be perfect if we had perfect visitors who are aware and eager to help the progress, help the humanity, help the ascension, help the first contact. Help portal activations, help initial downloads, no, help individual downloads be catalyzers for others, supporters for others, and be eager acceptors, accepting people, receptors, receptacles. <laughs> it was a joke from the previous workshop. Be a good receptacle. Uh, receivers, be a good receiver of the downloads. Downloaders, yeah. Part of that is hacking, right? So we hack the system. The whole system is to be hacked in terms of computer hacking. The whole system is to be hacked into the ascension. You know, the approaches could be different, but I think when you're desperate, hacking is just perfect. Like, remember Neo who was hacking the Matrix in the Matrix movie? So, yeah, I um, I, th I find it sufficient, and when it is uh, when it is enlightened, when it is kind, done with love, hacking I think is okay. You can call it different names, but hacking I think is uh, is pretty appropriate for the process. Let's hack the system and uh, and ascend. I wonder what 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 angels would say about hacking. They would probably find a better way. They would call it ascension or healing or uh, radical transformation. I don't know if they would like the word radical. They would call it a miracle. Yeah, we can call it a miracle. Awakening. Yeah, awakening. Just um, the property of that awakening is a jump transition. A transition which is not gradual, but uh, happens in a jump, discrete jump way. So we need actually to jump. We need to jump the, the levels. We need to upgrade the computer level, upgrade the game level. Are you ready for the upgrade? So for the upgrade to happen, we need to, in a healthy way, replace the old system with a new one. Replace the old energies with a new one. And the new energies feel weird. Oh gosh, how to describe it? When you lose all control, when you think you're completely drunk and you cannot uh, uh, tell apart top and bottom, right and left, your body and, and, and outside, when you lose the control, that's a perfect feeling for their alien contact. Your body is numb. You are not exactly in the body. You are not sure what you are thinking. <laughs> and uh, you think you are dying, but in, in fact, it's just alien contact. So the fourth, fourth dimension is, uh, is like that. Until you get used to the swimming there, walking there, being there, uh, diving in it is uh, is like death, and you just realize you're not dead, and you know your body doesn't disintegrate, and then you realize, oh, it's okay, it's all right. But uh, I'm warning you: when you're with us, if you feel sick, 
don't panic right away maybe it is just just signs of um, four dimensional higher dimensional energies it's just being drunk with love drunk with spirit if you have, have taken psychoactive drugs like alcohol or sugar you have felt that rush of weird energies and loss of control so it's just being drunk yep okay with that i conclude thank you for your for listening to that point and i'll continue later for now um i love you all um the challenges are interesting and uh, i invite you to think in that direction and unite and actually write to me yeah write to me with your questions i want your feedback and i want more topics for discussion i'm an alien who is in the human body and then sold in the human body and you are maybe too but i have the access to a lot of answers but to get the answers you need to ask questions so i invite more questions and uh, i uh, i found this new format and i i like it so i want to give you the answers this way send me your questions have a good day i love you i love you i do love you and you're being loved love yourself Ah, na ha, 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 na ha,